What's going on, Classic Buffalo family? This is your host with the most, Ryan Michael Masan. We're here with an episode from Arizona. Haley is somebody that we've done a story on three years ago, and we're going to be checking in on her. Super awesome person. It's crazy to follow up with somebody who was a part of of what I was trying to do three years ago and then kind of reconnecting and seeing where she's at because a lot's changed. So without further ado, let's listen. Haley, it's awesome to reconnect. It's been three years since uh, we kind of last shared your story. And so um, I wanted to reach out to you just to kind of see what's, what's happened over the last three years. So, um, but we'll get to that. So, it would be awesome if you could kind of start from the beginning. I know you're, you grew up in Fishers. You were there for like most of high school, like all the way through. Um, and then you went to. Indiana. And so why did you choose Indiana Wesleyan? So that's kind of a fun story. I actually was not thinking about Indiana Wesleyan at all. Um, I was looking at different schools. I actually thought that I was going to go to Purdue University for a while Um, But then the guy that I was dating at the time was like, hey, I'm going on this visit. Like, you should just come with, even though you're not thinking about it. And so I was like, "Okay, fine. Like, I'll come with. Maybe I'll check out their program just to see. Um, And I kind of fell in love with their athletic training program. Um, Just the number of staff members, the student ratio and just the quality of education that they had there um, was just really stood out to me. And I knew that I would get a great education there. So that kind of determined that for me. And then last minute it was kind of up to like the financial part of it so um was kind of talking to the financial aid office and ended up getting like a scholarship at the last second that made go there so let me ask you Haley about making friends because that can be kind of a um, hard part for people uh introverts extroverts even sometimes they don't know how to make friends especially at like IU or Purdue but I know you went Iowa wasn't that big so what strategies um, did you use to kind of meet other people and what would you recommend to somebody for you know like how to get a community yeah so obviously Iowa was pretty small there's only like 3,000 students but I know Um, especially for freshmen, there's all kinds of opportunities like events and things that the school planned to try and open up opportunities for you to meet people. And then there's also sporting events and intramurals and all of that kind of stuff. Um, And for me, um, my faith is a big part of it. So like the Christian organizations and communities um, are a great place to meet people as well. Mm. I, I know you said something about the well um, at one point, what was the well? Was that, you said something that was like worship? Yeah. So the well is a worship night that Indiana Wesleyan held. And it was on like a Monday night in the chapel, like upstairs hallway. Um, and it was just a really like raw, um, acoustic worship night where you could just come together and like worship the Lord together. So it was a Mm -hmm. really cool experience. So like if, if you're religious, it's kind of like, that's a big, like lean into that, find, you know, an FCA. If you're an athlete, find something religious to, if you're like, like if you're at IU, Purdue, Butler, IUPUI, find something if that's a part of your life and then they can kind of help you from there. Cause then I don't know when you're religious, that's such a big part of who you are, (laughs) you know? Yeah. And so, and you probably go to church and those people as a default, like you try to be nice to other people, including, and so they're like, Hey, I'm actually does intramural. I do intramurals or we go to this bar or we do game night or, you know, it's, I feel like that's a good strategy. Like if you're, if you are religious to kind of, to lean into that. Absolutely. So with athletics, um, what's your, what's your take on sports? Cause I know like, um, you want to do some type of physical training, maybe? Um, more kind sports of? medicine, yeah. Okay. Okay. Can you elaborate on that? Because for me, I don't know, maybe some other people like sport, like exercise science has always been kind of like, all right, so what exactly do you do? You know? Yeah. So I am actually a certified athletic trainer, which a lot of people mistake for a personal trainer. Um, it's not the same thing. 
Um, athletic training is more sports medicine, so it there's a lot of different ways that you can go with it. Um, but at least what I'm doing right now, I work in professional baseball, um, and so all of the minor league affiliates for a big organization will come to the spring training complex and do their rehab there. Um, so if they've had surgery or like a longer term injury, they'll send them there. Um, they'll work with me and the rehab coordinator. Um, and there's also two rookie league teams as well. So more of like the immediate emergency management um, and covering games and all of that kind of thing. So it's, it's a wide range from like injury care from like, Oh, you, scraped your knee open on the field or you broke your arm or something like that all the way to like rehabilitation from surgery. Mm. So when did you know, like, you kind of want to do that when were you, I mean, was it in college where you're like, there's this thing. And then like, how did that journey start with kind of like, I'm kind of interested in this and they're like, okay, I'm actually, Oh wow. Yeah. I'm really, you know, were there specific moments along the way that you were like got more and more and more like confident in it? Yeah, definitely. So my interest was first kind of sparked when I was in high school. Um, I was just looking for elective classes and took some sports medicine classes and absolutely fell in love with that. Um, and then kind of determined that that's the way that I wanted to go with my career from there. Um, and then once in college, obviously starting out in the program, our program, you did, a year of observation so we went to all the practices for the different sports at the university and kind of just watched what the different athletic training students and athletic trainers did um, and that kind of continued that interest I guess and then also just kind of the kind of person that I am so our school actually made us take this strengths quest thing which sounds super stupid but <laughs> <laughs> my one of my number one strengths was restorative um, and I feel like that really speaks to what I love to do and what I'm passionate about because um, I love helping people whether it's friends or athletes recovering from injury or something like that just kind of helping to bring them back to um, the best that they can be mm -hmm. yeah that's awesome how did you end up in Arizona so that's kind of fun. Um, last summer, I did an internship with the Arizona Diamondbacks while I was still in school. Um, it was really short, but I learned a lot from it. And then obviously went back to school for my senior year and was just kind of looking for job opportunities. And there was one that came up with the Oakland Athletics out in Arizona. And I applied for it and interviewed and ended up getting the job. So um Whoa flew out here like a week after I graduated and started working. Huh. When did you graduate? Uh, this past April. So like April Holy 27th. Cow. And then I had like a week to pack up my house because I was living off campus and moving truck came on Friday, left for Arizona on Saturday. Holy cow. That must have been like so stressful. It was pretty stressful, but um, I was excited about it. So it made it kind of worth it. It was kind of like okay, yeah, this is a lot going on, but it's a big payoff in the end and was really excited for the opportunity. Yeah. What's, uh, is there anything you can kind of share recently of something cool that's happened already, like through that? Um, yeah. So for me, obviously we kind of talked about like if you're religious, but for me, my faith is like a huge part of who I am. And obviously moving out here was a big change. Um, I, I'm living with family, but I didn't really have any friends out here, like not a whole lot of connections. So I came out here with nothing. Um, and for me, that was really good because there was some like deficiencies in my own life and kind of like mental health where I was struggling with things and being over dependent on other people um, to fill the holes in my life that I needed filled. Um, and that's not their job but I was putting kind of like that pressure on them. And so moving away from all of that and kind of being isolated forced me to kind of look at myself and the way that I was acting and re like interacting with other people um, and kind of was able to reconcile that and kind of fix some relationships as a result. Once I got myself right and my faith right, I was able to kind of realize how I was putting these expectations on other people um, and kind of fix that. What kind of expectations did you have to uh, battle with? Um, so for me, I've kind of on and off struggled with anxiety and depression since probably sixth grade. But mm. um, 
So when I'm feeling like super sad, I would rely on the other person to make me feel better. So I would like talk to these people about all this stuff and like I had a tendency to be really negative. Um, I would get in these like ruts and I would just talk myself in circles and like say the same thing over and over again, but just like stay in my upsetness. Um, And I would talk to these other people and kind of like want them to be the reason that I felt better um, instead of like actually just appreciating them for being the friend that they are. If that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. That they're going to be the one to completely save you. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's your experience been with counselors? Like, have you had a counselor before? Do you, what's your thoughts on just overall counseling? Would you recommend it? If you haven't, like what, what kind of, what are your thoughts on overall just like having a counselor in your life? Um, I think it kind of depends on who you are. I did go to counseling a little bit while I was in college. Um, two different times I tried it. And for me, it wasn't super helpful. Um, Mm -hmm. because like I said, I would just talk myself in circles. And so I'd be saying the same things and counselors jobs aren't really to like give you advice. It's more of just to like be a place for you to talk through things I guess um like a safe place for that which can be really good um depending on who you are and what you kind of need but for me that wasn't helpful because I've just I had the same stuff and so I would go in I'm like I don't have anything new to talk to you about like I don't Mm want to sit here and waste your time and take away from other people that could be benefiting from this more but I do think that that is a really good tool that um if you're needing someone to talk to and kind of just like sort through your thoughts Um, that's a great place to do that. Um, that's their job. They're trained for that. So I think that that's awesome for people that need that. Yeah. Like I've been with like, cause I did the same thing when I was at Taylor where I went to a counselor and I was trying to work through like my parents' divorce and I was trying to like, just, I, yeah, I was in the rut all the time. And then my counselor eventually like, just was like, Ryan, I can't do anything for you because like it was like, kind of a douchey way sort of kind of like yeah I can't do anything because you're just saying the same exact things every time we get together and it's just and she's giving me advice or trying to give me things to try and I'm not doing them and it just kind of became frustrating because she's also like sort of judging me when she's saying that yeah and so it kind of was like well I don't want to so counseling sucked (laughs) (laughs) but um I found a really good counselor who um he almost never gives me advice ever. And he always just like listens and he just, and he just says like, wow, that's really hard that you're going through that. Or he's trying to like, just, yeah, lets me, yeah. Creating that safe space. I think there's something to having a good and bad counselors where there just may not be a fit because some people, they want that advice. They want the practicality. And some people just want that space because they have so many people telling them, Oh, you need to do this. You need to do that. And they just want somebody to be like, oh, I'm sorry, that's difficult. You know, it just depends. Like it's a personality, just like maybe even in dating sort of, I guess, like chemistry or friendships. Like there's kind of needs to be somewhat of a, ah, that type of person just rubs me the wrong way or the way they, I don't know, maybe even coworkers, just relationships as a whole, platonic or romantic, the interactions are uh, somebody just may not be your style, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's interesting. I think I'm just frustrated with so many people that they judge others for being in counseling or having to go through counseling. Um, just because if you think counseling or medication or whatever is the best thing that you can try, I think it's just good that you're just trying to figure out, you know, or like, I'm going to, I'm not feeling well, so I'm going to, try switching up my diet or I'm going to do, I'm going to travel because I always wanted to travel. And then like, Oh my gosh, when I travel, I feel really good. I think it's important to try things versus like to do it a set way because everybody has to go to counseling or everybody has, I don't think that's necessarily true. Um, Yeah, I agree. I definitely think that every person's different. Um, So, I mean, when you're looking at mental health that you're not no one should be treated the same since they are all different and everyone's got mm-hmm. different experiences that they're coming from. And that has a, par- a part in that. Um, so I think it's important definitely for people to find out what works for them, whether that's counseling or something else. And I, mm-hmm. 
-hmm. I also agree like it is frustrating when people kind of stigmatize either counseling or therapy but those can be really helpful things and it doesn't mean there's something wrong with that person or anything like that so it's I would definitely agree yeah all right so on your social media which I creeped a little bit on your (laughs) recent stuff of like you posting photos with um you got wind chimes Yes. Sorry. (laughs) Uh, There you go. Wind chime life. That's great. Um, (laughs) So on your social media posts, you talk about like, um, I don't know, you seem to be very encouraging or you're somewhat vulnerable of questions. Uh, What did you put? You put something like um, extending grace. Yeah. You said something about extending grace to ourselves when we're so used to and easily able to forgive others, but we don't forgive ourselves. I thought that was really cool. So my, my question first is what inspired you to write that and B, what's been the feedback on social media or from your friends that, cause I'm sure you do. I think I saw that you do that kind of often in some, most of your posts where you're kind of coming at some type of encouraging comment in the caption, you know, what's been your experience where people are like, Oh, I really like when you do those or, you know, or it doesn't even matter to you. You're like, I just do it. Cause I, I know it's a good thing to do. Yeah, so that was something that I did started doing kind of recently. Um, I kind of hate social media, but also kind of love it. It's a love-hate relationship for sure. But I kind of decided, you know, there's so much, like, superficiality out there um, and so much, like, trying to look perfect. And so um, I've kind of tried to just in my captions – be vulnerable and like talk about issues that I think a lot of people maybe don't talk about or that doesn't get enough light shed on it to kind of provide like a little bit of difference I guess from the typical like oh look at all this fun that I'm having with my friends Mm -hmm. um so that's kind of like the motivation that's been behind it but it kind of just depends. So a lot of times it's stuff that's happening in my life or things that I'm figuring out. So um, if as I'm talking to friends or like going through just different seasons in my life, um, kind of trying to share what my thoughts are and my experiences are. Um, as far as feedback, it kind of depends. So I've had some people kind of give me a hard time about it. They're like, this is Instagram. Like, I don't want some long caption to read. And like, that's fine. I don't care. If you don't want to read it, keep scrolling. But for the people that (laughs) (laughs) the people that do read it, um, I've gotten good feedback. Like some people are like, wow, I really needed to hear this today or Mm -hmm. like, thank you for sharing. Um, So that's been kind of encouraging. Um, Not really that that's what I'm looking for. I honestly don't even have notifications on for any of my social media. Like I'll get on and check occasionally, um, but Mm -hmm. I don't have like things popping up on my phone other than my text messages. So. How did you manage that? Were you at one point really involved in it and then you kind of weaned yourself off? Like, how did you kind of manage to, for it to not be that big of a part of your life, but you're kind of able to use it in a proactive or, or a positive way? How were you kind of able to do that? Um, for me, it's never like social media has never been about like how many likes or that type of thing. Um, just because I know that that's not really like an accurate reflection of at least what I've experienced in real life um, because like everything's so driven by comparison. And if I was caught up in that, then I think that I would not be in a good place. Um, So I kind of try and like separate myself from that to kind of give myself space and kind of a more realistic view, I guess, of what life is like. Um, So, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's never really been a big deal to me, like, how many comments or how many likes. And, like, sure, it's nice when that happens, but I try not to look at that and put too much weight on that. Yeah. Do you have, like, a motto or do you have, like, a – yeah, let's go with that first because I have another question related to it. But do you have, like, a motto? Yeah. Um, Not, like, a set in stone motto. I have like two things I guess one of them is I always try to be honest like so if it's not true I'm not gonna say it so if I want to compliment you or something like that I'm gonna find something that I actually believe to be true like I'm not gonna say I like your hair if I don't like your hair um but if I'm like (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, like, that's a really cool shirt. Like, you know that I genuinely believe that that's a cool shirt because I'm not going to say it if it's not true. There's so much, like, fakeness in the world, so I try not to add to that. Talk about an embarrassing moment uh, recently or something that happened, yeah, kind of moving out to Arizona, anything? Um, embarrassing moment. I mean, I just have, like, a funny story. It's yeah. not really yeah. super embarrassing. So I was in the drive through the other day, and I put the car in park because I was paying with a gift card. And it was taking a long time. And so then I forgot that I put the car in park and I got ready to leave the drive through and like revved the engine because my car was in park. <laughs> that was kind of embarrassing because there was a bunch of people sitting outside. Too, oh. And I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> what? Yeah. What is Arizona like? The people? I mean, are they nice? Are they kind of colder? Does it, you know, what are you what are you noticing about like the culture over there? Um, from my experience, everyone's pretty nice. They're pretty open. Um, as you go out west, I would say, like, people are more friendly than maybe in Indiana. Um, like, you're walking down the street and, like, smile at people. Um, just because the weather's nicer, I feel like that kind of has an impact. Um, yeah. At least I know for myself, like, the weather affects my mood a lot. So, um, just having it be nice weather all the time makes it so it's a little more, like, friendly um and then I also think that like it's just like a little slower like it feels like people aren't as in much of as much of a rush to get Mm -hmm. everywhere yeah what do you what do you like do for fun there do you like go like hiking I don't know if there's I think there's mountains in Arizona but um... there are there are mountains it's really hot this time of year so it's hard to get out and go hiking unless you go super early in the morning which I have done a few times um woke up at like 4 30 do a sunrise hike um, before it gets hot outside um there are mountains so definitely as it gets cooler that'll be a good thing I do love being outdoors um that's super fun there's all kinds of trails and different things that you can do outside um and then I also play pickup soccer so that's been Mm. kind of fun um I've never played soccer before so it was kind of a new thing coming out here and it was like a big fear and I was like you know what I'm gonna conquer this like I'm gonna (laughs) play soccer like even though it scares me um and it's been really good to do that it's been fun and is a good way to meet people as well um I'm also assistant coaching slash shadowing like a coach for a youth soccer team um so that's pretty fun. And then I'm serving in the high school ministry at the church that I go to. Do you go to like a small church or like a big one? Um, I go to Hillsong. So it's kind of big. Whoa. They have one out there? Yeah. So there's campuses in a lot of big cities. So Hillsong Phoenix is like the overarching, but then there's different campuses within the cities surrounding Phoenix. So like Mesa and Scottsdale and all of that. Mm-hmm. And they just opened up Hillsong College USA, too, in, at the Mesa campus. Yeah. So. so do you have a kind of a passion? Like, do you want to do ministry at any point? Or do you want to do, like, uh, did you ever consider that? Because I know, like, church and God's kind of important to you. But um, And you mentioning the youth coaching soccer. Like, do you kind of want to get into children's ministry or, like, children's athletics, if that's a thing? Um, so I did think about sports ministry for a while. When I came into college, I actually had a double major with athletic training and sports ministry. Um, and I did an internship a couple summers ago with, um, fellowship of Christian athletes, like a baseball team for college summer athletes. And it was a super great experience. Um, but after that, I kind of decided like, okay, this isn't something that I can maintain long term, not because I don't love the ministry aspect of it, but just because um, there's so much focus in ministry on fundraising. Um, So that was something that I really struggled with just because I don't have the resources and that type of thing to be able to fundraise at the capacity that other people can. So doing that full time as my career isn't really an option for me, but I do... um, try and do things that kind of speak to that in my own like personal life. So outside of work, right. So with coaching and with serving in the high school ministry, um, those are ways that I'm able to kind of feed that passion without having it 
be my like full time career. Mm-hmm. I have a really simple yet complex question, and that is: Does pineapple belong on pizza? Yes, it does. <laughs> oh, um, okay. <laughs> So growing up, one of my favorite pizzas was like Hawaiian pizza. And I know it's not actually like Hawaiian because it was made in America, but I love that kind of pizza. It was one of my favorites. And I think it's a good compliment, like the sweetness with the saltiness of the garlic and all of the stuff that goes on pizza. Um, I think it goes well, but. Do you have to have barbecue sauce on it to be a pineapple pizza, like Hawaiian or what? No. So Hawaiian pizza is like normal tomato sauce and then cheese pineapple and canadian bacon whoa what's the difference between regular bacon and canadian bacon canadian bacon is basically ham i think oh okay that makes sense have you been to canada i have yes where um i've been to victoria but i don't really count that because i was six months old and then i've also been to the grand canyon um when i was in high school in canada yes the Grand... Not Grand Canyon. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, they got, their, they got their own. Okay. Niagara Falls. Okay. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I've been to Toronto twice, and I really like Toronto. Yeah, I've heard it's a great city. For whatever reason, I thought Canada was going to be like Pink Mountains, but it's a lot like the Midwest, you know? Yeah, not a whole lot different. Oh, but I liked it. It was kind of very open, too, but and then you just have, like... It feels like an American city when there's little things like, oh, they this is, you know, obviously the currency will kind of always bring you back. You're like, oh, yeah, this cost, this is different. Yeah. But did you know that the, I'm not sure if this is official, but like actual maple syrup and in, like infused in the currency? I've heard that, but I don't know if it's true. Okay. Because when you smell it, it smells like maple syrup. Really? Yeah. Like the dollars or whatever, the canadian dollars Interesting. Yeah, fun fact <laughs> but yeah i love toronto uh where else is, so you've been have you been to the grand canyon i'm assuming you probably have been in arizona yes have you not, i been, haven't been, been i haven't been since i moved out here i went when i was like 10 or 11 years old but i'm actually going back um the position i'm in right now is actually a temporary position which is a whole another deal that um struggle that I'm kind of dealing with but on the way back Mm -hmm. my mom's flying out and we're going to stop at the Grand Canyon on the way back to Indiana well yeah let me ask so uh where are you at right now so this is a temp job I'm assuming with baseball so yes where where are you at today like kind of are you looking for another job are you kind of trying to move again you know stuff like that yeah so I My position was originally supposed to end, like, at the end of August. Um, That was the original agreement. It was just going to be from, like, May to the end of August when the season ended for the rookie ball team. And they ended up extending the position, which I was super excited about because I wasn't expecting that at all. So I'm staying for instructional league as well. So I have three more weeks of work. And then it's a big question mark after that. I'm trying to look for jobs but it's a little hard because especially in baseball a lot of them aren't posted yet um the end of like the major league season is towards the end of October Mm -hmm. so kind of just trying to be patient in this time of like transition um and trying to be open to whatever opportunities come up and just kind of be present where I'm at and make the most of the time that I have with not knowing what's next so you said you're coming home to Indy at some point yes yeah, so at the end of my position I'm actually living with my aunt and uncle right now okay so I don't have like a house here to like stay mm-hmm. at or like funds to pay for it if I didn't have a job obviously so moving back to Indiana until I find something um and I'll live with okay. my parents until I find a job hopefully it shouldn't be too long after I get back but you know Mm-hmm. Just trying to be open to that yeah. and see what happens. Yeah, all of the jobs I've gotten were because I've known somebody. Like when I've – well, that's not true. Well, okay, yeah, it is. It's actually <laughs> – it's true, but I've also gotten job interviews just by, you know, applying and then kind of – like one job, I think it was uh, for a sports team doing marketing. They posted this job and then like I sent a long email responding to every single requirement. Or like, 
job position or like kind of duties or something and like and it was a long email but it was every single reason why like i can do that and here's experience why like blah 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 blah, blah. and i got an email like 20 minutes later like we need to talk to you tonight like we no one's ever done this before like <laughs> we really appreciate it but like i got my first job out of college when i just called up like a family friend and was trying to get a, his address to send uh, a photo for se- my senior photo Mm-hmm. and he's like what are you doing i'm like i'm not doing anything and he's like well are you good at this 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 and i'm like yes 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 and he's like all right well come on down and and then i was there for like a year and a half just doing marketing and social media and website design and stuff but it's always just been people i've known so if that's any encouragement to you of i'm sure you're a good person as well, well i know you are but just, <laughs> and i'm sure you know a lot of people so, yeah, definitely. Connections is a huge part. Like networking is so important, especially in sports, but in any job, really. Um, just like getting out there, maybe even like calling people that are in the field that you want to go to and right. like asking them questions about like, what do you like about your job? Like, what's the hardest part? What's the best part? That type of thing. Um, and that way you kind of have that baseline established. So that if you do go apply later, you can be like, hey, I know this person who works in this field. And they're able to kind of like speak to that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like your kind of hope dream is just kind of trying to find the job stuff and just being open to where, you know, you want to be and stuff. Um, To anybody who's um, afraid of going for their dream, who's afraid of moving. Because obviously like even though you're living with family, you moved out to Arizona. How did you move past um, and those are kind of different things, moving towards your dream and then moving into a foreign, you know, territory. But um, sometimes they can go together like you have to move to go for your dream. So that's and that can be stressful. Um, how did you get over that? Ooh, that's a good question. So I actually kind of had a hard time when I first moved out here. Um, I am staying with family, which is super nice, but um, I hadn't seen them in a long time so it was still kind of something I guess a little different it was really hard to move to a new new environment a new like job new people all of that so I guess what helped me through that was kind of trying to not let my fear control me um, which is really hard to do especially for me like a huge part of like my personality is kind of driven by fear which isn't the healthiest thing but it's a reality um so trying to just not let fear control me and go out and do things that maybe scare me so like for me doing pickup soccer was really scary but it ended up being like a great thing and I've met some friends from it and that's kind of like helped build a community and maybe going to a church if you're religious and like meeting people there is another way that like I've met friends as well. And so kind of trying to like get out of your comfort zone and meet people and kind of build a community to kind of help you through that transition process is a huge part of what kind of helped me, Mm -hmm. I guess, navigate that. Right. That's awesome. What's like a way that somebody kind of helped you? Uh, that you're like, oh, when they said that or that when they did this, when I wasn't doing very well, like that really helped. Um, something, some of the friends that I hung out with were like just super encouraging, like welcoming me in and not kind of judging me or any of that, just kind of just being there and being able to just like call them like, hey, what are you doing tonight? Like, I'm bored and feeling lonely or whatever and they're like yeah come hang out like come do whatever so just their openness to kind of um including me in their plans and that type of thing was kind of stand out for me Mm -hmm. yeah that's something i've always always been passionate about is like people who don't struggle with mental health um like they're just really never they don't understand anxiety or depression it's like how to equip those people to help people who do Mm -hmm. Because I've always just been curious with people who, even if it's just dabbling instead of like, oh my gosh, PTSD is like just really debilitating or this, you know, some, you could be anywhere on the spectrum of affectability of your mental health. So, um, yeah, I asked that just to see if there's anything that like 
to help the person who would be in your friend's spot. You're like, oh, I could, so I can, like, if my son or my daughter or my brother is struggling, I need to reach out. I need to text them every day or every other day or once a week. I'm like, hey, let's go get coffee. Or, you know, I'm trying to find out personally, like, so like if there's trends so that I can share that. So it's always good to hear what other people have done for, you know, people like you. Yeah, Um, definitely um, reaching out. Just like even something that I've tried to do is like, I mean, the the golden rule is like do unto others that you would have under do unto you. And so mm -hmm. I try and like, I'll text people and be like, Hey, how are you? How are you doing? Like, what are you excited for this year? Like all kinds of stuff, just kind of checking in because I really appreciate when people do that for me. Um, And so I guess that would be something just like reach out to people, keep in touch and ask how they're doing. Um, Mm -hmm. And if sometimes people will be willing to open up um, and sometimes they won't and that's okay. But like, just keep, keep doing that. Keep checking in, keep saying like, Hey, how's it going? Like how's Arizona or like whatever, stage of life the person's in just like ask how they're doing i guess yeah that's great well that's um that'll do it i think you uh you killed it you did a, you did a good job you what's the let's see how you you had a purpose and you went out and found it and you, you killed it and you yes. nailed it <laughs> and the, the purpose today was a podcast and helping me out and stuff <laughs> yes, yes you're changing the world even if it's one person that's the strategy i'm taking is if there's one person who listens to it and they're like oh my gosh i felt really good today because Haley said something nice or um you know that's there's a favorite so i'll end on this story um and it's like the have you heard of the starfish have you heard of that starfish I don't story think so. no so there's this boy on the beach and he keeps tossing these starfish into the into the water and they keep washing up and all that stuff and this old guy comes up to him and he's like, what are you doing? Like, it's just a waste of the time. Like you keep throwing them in and they keep washing back up. And he's like, well, it matters to that starfish. Like to the one that I threw in, it matters. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's so good. Schooling an old guy. No, <laughs> but it's accurate, you know? So yeah, definitely. Um, I, I appreciate it. Even if not a lot of people listen to this yet, but um, you know, you're, you're, I just wanted to encourage you and say that you have a bigger impact than you think. And, um, just from what you've told me and stuff, it really sounds like you're a rock for other people and that you're, um, you're really going to be doing some great things. So, um, I'm excited for you. Well, thank you. I'm excited for you too, with your podcast. When you reached out again, I was excited to hear what you were doing and how you're kind of reviving the classic Buffalo and kind of raising that awareness for mental health and creating Mm -hmm. like a place where people can say like, Hey, I'm not alone. Like I'm not the only one that's dealing with this. And I think that's so important to have that. Thank you. Well, Hey, well, I'll, I'll stay in touch. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. Because (laughs) yeah. And um, if you come back, we'll hang out. We'll keep in touch all that jazz. Um, And then um, if you, hopefully you'll find a job soon and then um, whether it's in India or, in Afghanistan or wherever, <laughs> somewhere in the middle. Um, yes. but yeah, you'll be fine, but uh, we'll stay in touch, right? Sounds good. All right. Have a good day. You too. Bye. Hey, everybody. This is Ryan from the Classic Buffalo Podcast. Wanted to take a second to talk about Anchor, how I'm actually making this podcast happen super happy that i'm partnering with them so anchor is actually the easiest way to make a podcast i've done my research this is basically the best way i promise it's going to give you everything you need in one place for free which is the best part it's going to have tools so you don't really need a fancy schmancy recording guy anchor is going to be helping you out there and then they're going to distribute the podcast everywhere to spotify apple Podcasts, google everything And then you can also make money with basically no minimum listenership, which is kind of rare. So hop on Anchor as soon as you can. Thanks. So I just got done talking with Haley and my debrief is an interesting one because I've already done her story before and that was three years ago. She won some contests I did with Classic Buffalo. I met her got her a free shirt we shared her story and stuff Um, and I didn't really check in for a while and 
that's partly in partly in part to the fact that I kind of quit Classic Buffalo around the same time. So I didn't really keep in touch with anybody, and um, I felt bad because I had to just I had I quit Classic Buffalo because I had to make a living, and I don't really talk about this, but um, I did a Shark Tank pitch, and I guess I can go into detail with this at another time, but that was the biggest thing that was going to be uh, helping me to make this an actual job. And I, f- I don't know, fail is probably the wrong word to use, but it didn't go through and um, I had to find a job. So I did. And the only job I could find, uh, because I tried doing ministry, um, was working for an old family friend. And that's when I had to move back to Florida. And that's why I asked Haley about moving out to Arizona is because, so I've moved to Florida back to my hometown. I didn't know anybody anymore, basically. All my friends were gone. The city has changed and, but I'm staying with my aunt and I was on like just survival mode. I'm crying on the drive home to Florida. I'm you know, having panic attacks like none other. I don't know anyone. And I couldn't, I didn't ever stay indoors because I was just going to have a panic attack. So all I did was I'd go outside and play basketball or I'd rollerblade. And that's almost every night I would go and rollerblade downtown Stewart because I just didn't want to be at home playing video games by myself. And I wanted, it's kind of a pro tip here. If you feel alone or you work remotely, go work at a Starbucks or a coffee shop because it allows you to feel like you're around people. That's why, like, if I don't have plans on the weekend, I'll still go out to eat because it gives, again, the illusion of for yourself that you're being around people. You don't have to even talk with them. So I highly recommend that. But um, it's just interesting to talk with some of these two people, like, especially recently, the last two have been, well, last three I've been in college or out of college or barely and knowing I just went through some of this stuff. Haley's awesome. And I can tell that because of just the Instagram posts that she posts and that like how she was so nonchalantly talking about um, not really caring about likes, which interestingly enough, Instagram is talking about removing the like button altogether, which please do that. That would be so interesting to see how that changes content. But how encouraging and long her posts are and then she people are like that's not what instagram's for well screw you dude who cares what you think honestly um you should do if you do whatever you want if that's what you believe is the best thing to do in the moment and i think that's kind of what Haley's doing she's taking care of herself she's religious so she's pouring into the church and um pouring into the youth and I don't know it's really cool to see somebody say like all right I'm into sports or I'm into xyz I'm gonna go for it so she did and man it's cool because I I, you know I remember how much struggling I did learning to cook learning how to pay for almost all my bills you know for the first time meeting friends as an adult is the probably the hardest thing they don't teach you how to do or other than taxes <laughs> or just general life stuff. But Haley's Haley's great and um, such a positive light. That's why I reach out to those types of people because I can see I can see the good vibes. And I really I really resonated with the not speaking on something unless I really believe it's the truth. I do the exact same thing and it gets frustrating because that I really believe that in my heart of hearts about oh my gosh, I really feel good vibes about you or, oh my gosh, man, you, it's usually a personality trait that I'm like, oh, that's so cool that they do that. And it's, I, it's a feeling that I have. It's not just like a thought, but it's a deeper feeling. So I highly resonated when she said that. But yeah, if you, man, I don't know. It's just cool. Cool to keep doing this. It's cool to, it's my third interview. Just going to keep going. I've I've got another two or three more people through Vintage Indie that I'm meeting up with or talking with because a lot of those people aren't here. So it's a lot of phone call stuff and hopefully this connection because I was having connection issues with this with Anchor, but it's cool. It's really cool to be interviewing people and just catch up and find out what they're doing and shoot the breeze and stuff man so yeah thank you Haley you're awesome I'm excited for you and 
I know you'll get a job. I know that you will um, figure it out because you're you're a good cookie. That's that's what my mom would probably say. But until next time, it's been your friend and greatest supporter, Ryan. See you.